When it comes to school, many parents consider it a second home for their kids. And when the students go into their classroom, parents expect a safe environment. But some believe their schools are not doing everything they can to keep their kids safe, and it could lead to serious health consequences. Today's technology taking these kids on a virtual trip to the moon. This is the Great Wall of China. And to myriad other places in the universe. Montgomery County Schools is the first school system in our area to partner with Google to offer the expedition's pioneer program. Smartphones inside cardboard boxes. An app takes the kids to the location virtually. The first I heard of Google Expedition is when my nine-year-old came home and um, told me about the exciting field trip she took. But yeah. Laura Simon questioned the safety of kids putting smartphones to their heads next to their eyes. The kids were complaining of headaches and nausea and dizziness and they had eye strain and there was a Google rep there that just said, uh, you know, just take a few minutes, this is normal. Laura is a member of a parent organization called Safe Tech for Schools Maryland, fighting for the safe use of technology in the classroom. It's not just Google Expeditions that has them concerned. It's the whole technology program in the Montgomery County school system. MCPS recently purchased 40,000 laptops and Chromebooks for students from the third grade level to high school. They upgraded the Wi-Fi system, installing routers or access points, some right in the middle of the classroom ceiling, over student desks. They are emitting radio frequencies all day long. Lisa Klein's eight-year-old son has his own school-issued Chromebook. I'm concerned that he's getting exposed to radiation, even low levels, um, A, without my consent, but mostly without knowing what it's going to do to him long term. Neither Klein nor the rest of the parent organization is asking to get rid of the technology. They simply want it used safely. This is a health issue. And at MCPS, it's being treated like a technology issue. They need to teach students how to use their devices safely, and there should not be wireless in the schools. Sherwin Collette, chief technology officer for MCPS, declined an interview with Fox 5. But in a board of education meeting last September, he said reducing Wi-Fi in his school system makes no sense. You cannot live by a precautionary principle on this count that says, ooh, because we may not know something, we must do nothing, and we would hardwire all devices. It makes no sense. I think that the Montgomery County schools are misinformed, and they're making a huge mistake that is compromising the health and safety of the students and of the teachers. An expert on bioelectric magnetics, Dr. Deborah Davis is the founder of the Environmental Health Trust, a nonprofit working to protect kindergarten and middle school children from health risks of cell phones and Wi Fi systems. She's done more than 200 studies on the subject and says even relatively low exposure can interrupt normal brain or reproductive development in a child. We think that this is going to be related to leukemia and possibly lymphomas later on as well. Mm -hmm. And again, the question is, do you want to experiment on your children? Mm -hmm. In 2011, the World Health Organization classified radio frequency electromagnetic fields, including Wi-Fi and cell phone signals, as possibly carcinogenic to humans. Some scientists say radio frequency waves don't cause cancer, but more and more experts in the field are coming forward expressing concern. The American Academy of Pediatrics, along with the Government Accountability Office, or GAO, are urging the FCC to adopt up-to-date radiation standards. Current standards are 20 years old and don't account for a child's use. More than a dozen scientists and pediatric neurology experts from Harvard to the California Brain Tumor Association have written letters to MCPS, joining the parent organization in urging the school system to switch to wired technology. To hear people, oncologists and epidemiologists, saying, I don't know about this stuff, and that's good enough for me. I don't want my, my child to be the guinea pig in that experiment. Well, we reached out to the FCC with questions, and they too declined our request for an interview, but they did release this statement, quote, the U.S. has among the most conservative standards in the world. As part of our routine review of these standards, we are soliciting input from multiple stakeholder experts, including federal health agencies and others, to guide our assessment. 
Meanwhile, Russia, Italy, France, Switzerland, China, Belgium are among more than 20 other countries in the world that have enacted policies to reduce Wi-Fi mm. school and exposure in schools. And there are communities here in the U.S., including uh, several in uh, Massachusetts and in uh, New York and in California that are taking action to reduce Wi-Fi or even ban Wi-Fi wow. altogether. It's so. interesting. It's scary. I mean, think of how often we have, you know, this technology up, you know, so close to us, our phones that we right. put to our head and... You know, it's, you don't realize. There's what, even a disclaimer on the phone that says, yeah. "Don't put this. Don't put it right next to your head. Use your your earphones." But people don't know. Mm -mm. People don't know. All right. Good information. Thanks, Laura.